Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our level design based on a texture and we're going to add multiple object types. Let's begin. So here is the scene from the previous video. We have our player being spawned in a specific position. That position is defined by a tinted pixel in our texture. So as you can see our texture in here has a player defined by a blue color being spawned on position 2, 2. Since this starts on 0, so 0, 1, 2. So this is 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. So, okay. And as you can see in here, we are correctly reading that the player is spawned on 2, 2. And since we define the units per pixel as 20F, the player is on the world position 40, 40. So 2 times 20, 40. Okay, great. We can view the code in here. We are cycling through the width and then the height of the texture. So in here, we are checking every single pixel. We grab the color, we convert that color into a hexadecimal string. Then we do a switch on that string and compare it to our constant. Our player constant, which is a blue color, so 0000FF, so pure blue. If he does find that pixel, then he says that the player was found on XY. He sets the player spawn position based on the XY multiplied by a units per pixel defined in here, and then we spawn the player on that position. So just looking at how we set up our code here, you can probably guess how we're going to implement multiple object types. The first thing we need to do is to go up here and define another color string. Now let's make the ammo drop. So in here, make a private const string for the ammo color. And we're going to define the ammo color, let's say in yellow. So FF, FF, 0, 0. We're using pure colors just to keep our code nice and simple. Now down here on our switch, we do a case ammo color. If we do find a pixel that has the ammo color defined in here, then we're going to spawn some ammo. So we're going to use the functions that we have down here. We have a function to spawn the player, health pack, ammo pack, enemy, or a wall. So we're going to spawn a ammo pack. And now for the position, we can actually calculate this position outside of our switch since the position is the same regardless of what type we find. So in here, let's just define our position by the XY multiplied by units per pixel. Okay. So in here, we spawn the player in that position and we spawn a ammo pack on that position. All right. So now we can go into our level texture and in here, we're going to set the color to our pure color. So we're going to set it to FF, FF, 00. So a pure yellow, this will be the color that references our ammo pack. So let's put it somewhere to the right of our player, right there, okay. So now let's test and we should be able to see a ammo pack being spawned to the right of our player. So here we are and as you can see, there is indeed an ammo pack spawned in there. So I can spend some ammo, then I go in there and I replenish my ammo. Great, so we have added another different object spawn type. Now let's add the rest of our objects. So again, down here we have all of our objects, the player, the health pack, the ammo, enemy, and the wall. So let's go up here and define colors for all of those object types. So for the wall, let's make it in black. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. okay. For the health, let's make it in green. So 0, 0, FF, 0, 0. And for the enemy, let's make him in red. So FF, 0, 0, 0, 0. Again, we're defining the colors as pure colors just to make things easier, but as long as the hexadecimal value is unique, we can use anything. So for example, the enemy in here could be defined by say FF8B19, which if we go up here, we can see that that color is a somewhat orange. We could use that and it works just as well. But again, in order to keep our code nice and simple, let's just keep it to a pure red. All right, so now that we have defined all of our colors, now in our switch, let's call upon that function whenever it matches the color that we define. So in here, let's do a case, our health color. So if you do find a pixel that matches the health color, let's spawn a health pack on our position. Case we find a pixel that matches the enemy color, let's spawn an enemy on that position. And finally, case we find a pixel that matches the wall color, let's spawn a wall. All right, so again, the code is very simple. We are simply going through every single pixel. We are getting the hexadecimal value of the color of that pixel, and we are spawning the correct object depending on the color of that pixel. So now our code part is set up, let's handle our texture. So in here, we have our player position, our ammo position, 
Now next to the ammo, let's spawn some health. So our health is defined by 00FF00. So let's spawn the health next to the ammo. Then let's spawn some walls down here. So walls are in pure black. So put a bunch of walls in there. And finally, let's spawn an enemy. Our enemy is in pure red and let's spawn him in there. So just looking at this image, you can probably imagine how the final game will turn out. This will be an enemy, this will be an ammo pack, a health pack, our player and some walls underneath. So with our test level set up, let's see it in game. Okay, so here I am, the player being positioned in there, a bunch of walls down here. There's the enemy, he's coming from that corner, yep. And here we have a health pack and our ammo pack. And everything works perfectly fine, I've got 18 ammo and if I go there... Boom, now I got 20 and our health is maxed, but I can still pick it up and everything works fine. Okay, so we have now set up multiple object types. Now, using what we've created so far, let's try to create a somewhat interesting level. Now, first of all, our code in here should flawlessly support any level texture size. So let's just change the size of our texture to test that out. So in here, I'm going to change the canvas of my texture. Instead of being 10 by 10, let's say it's 100 by 40. Paint the background in white, okay. Let me move the player from there and put him somewhere down here, okay. So this should be a much bigger level. And let's go into our code and let's automatically create some walls surrounding the level so our player stays inside the level bounds. So after we spawn everything down here, let's do a couple of fours. Four int x, x less than the level texture dot width and x plus plus so essentially we're going to cycle through the entire x axis and here let's calculate a position and spawn a wall now for that position we want to spawn a wall at the bottom and at the top so for the y since the y starts at zero let's spawn an outside wall on minus one so after spawning a wall on the bottom let's spawn another one on the top so using the level texture dot height we're going to spawn some walls in there. Okay, now let's spawn the vertical walls. All right, so we should be spawning some horizontal walls on top and bottom and some vertical walls on the left side and on the right side. So this is just so we can easily see the bounds of our level. And on our level texture, let's add some ammo drops on the exact bottom and on the exact top, just to make sure that our walls are being correctly spawned. Okay, let's see. Okay, as you can see, our player is now on the lower left corner of our map. And if I go to the right here, I should be able to see, yep, there it is, a ammo pack right on the zero on the map. So our walls are on the outside of our map. Okay, great. So now that we have the size of our map correct and walls on the outside of it, we can now go paint our texture and make a really cool level. So let's do that. Alright, so here is a somewhat complex level. We got walls around all over the place. We have some corridors, some open areas, multiple enemy spawns throughout the map, various ammo and health drops, and the player spawning in here. So let's see how this level is represented in game. Alright, so at first glance everything seems correct. I'm spawning on an enclosed space, which matches that. And in front of here we have a corridor. Okay, everything seems great. If I keep going, there should be some enemies. And yep, there they are, I can shoot them, yep. And down here, there should be a hidden area. Yep, there you go, there in the corner. And more enemies, and I'm almost out of ammo, so let me go into my hidden area and pick up some health and ammo.
Yep, so as you can see, the level is working exactly as we define in our texture. So there you have it. We took our level design texture code and added the ability for spawning multiple object types. We can now easily draw our maps pixel by pixel and everything spawns correctly when in game. In the next video, we're going to make several levels and load them one after the other. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.